Good morning, everyone. It's good to have you on this bright, sunshiny yeah. Sunday morning. And wow, was it yesterday a weather ride? I went to my uh, band practice at 11 in short sleeves. I got out at 12. I was freezing. So it was quite a ride yesterday. So we welcome you today as we begin worship want to give thanks to Deanna and Sue for their ministry of music they are sharing with us this morning. Also, to remind you of the mitten tree back there, and there are still just a couple ornaments back on the tree for our adoptive family, so please be attentive to that if you haven't grabbed the ornament. Today's your day because we'll be making arrangements after worship next Sunday to deliver. Uh, our Christmas gifts to the family. We want to note, and you enjoy it, that there are goodies and refreshments following worship. For some reason, we decided not to put them out ahead of time, fearing, uh, fearing that you would still be back there munching on things. So, after church, a time just during the holidays for us all to pause together and and have a time of refreshment together. Remind you as you look through the bulletin of the events happening this week and of the notice, uh, just reminding you of our times for the bell concert on Christmas Eve and for our candlelight service. And for the candlelight service, we'll have both real candles and also battery operated candles so everyone no matter age, can participate in our candle lighting time. So let us prepare ourselves for worship this day in hearing these words of faith for Advent. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be moved, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. Amen.
Today we light the third candle for Advent, joy. Joy is the space between your breath and your laughter. Joy is a hand wrapped around yours. Joy is your heart beating in sync with someone else's heart. Joy is that first day of a new season and the intoxicating hope it brings. Joy is dancing in the kitchen and singing in your car. Joy is the first cry of a newborn baby. Joy is contagious. Joy is a song. Joy is the daughter of gratitude. Joy is the heart of praise. Today, we plant our feet in joy. For much of Advent, we assume the position of leaning forward, longing for the moment where God will break into this world once more. However, today we stop leaning to remember with gratitude all that God has already done for us, through us, and around us. Thus today, we light the candle of joy as a thank you for laughter and for hands that hold our own. We light the candle of joy for the change in seasons, for kitchen dance parties, and for newborns. And most importantly, we light the candle of joy as a sign of gratitude for a God who makes water in the desert, heals the sick, offers sight to the blind, and who knows us by name. If joy is the song of praise, then joy is where we should stand. in our call to worship. Advent is a child's delight, a journey to our own Bethlehem, where something new awaits to be born. Advent is responding to a deep yearning, going on a quest, following a star to a place of wonder and joy. Advent is watching and anticipating. Waiting for a baby's cry, the angel's song, and the whole world rejoicing. Come, let us continue our Advent journey.
Bitte. Let us unite our voices in our morning prayer. Loving God of all creation rejoices for you. For it was you who hung the stars and you who made our beating hearts. Thus we anticipate the birth of your Son. Fill our hearts not only with hope and peace, which we so desperately need, but also with joy. For when the night feels too long and the darkness too strong, you light the way for us. In your holy name we so gratefully pray. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this day comes from the prophetic book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 18 through 19. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. It springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. These are the words of God for the people of God this day. Thanks be to God. As we gather within these moments and we survey the landscape of our lives, we encounter the moments of sweetness and joy and we give thanks to God for them. And we encounter also the mountains and the valleys in which we find it difficult to travel. And God is with us in all of those moments. Our hearts especially go out for all the people injured and who lost lives through the tornadoes, especially the devastation in Kentucky on Sunday night. So many people taken from so many families and loved ones without warning. May our hearts beat tenderly and our spirits be moved for the grief that they share in these moments. And may their grief be lessened by our prayers for them this and in the days to come. As we've gathered this day, are there other words of concern, words of joy we wish to lift up and to share with one another? Sue? I'd just like to ask for prayers for our grandson, Everson, and his family. He's going to be having surgery to remove a tumor Well, that Joy got to see all eight of my three grandchildren and Marion yesterday. <laughs> oh my, how wonderful that is, and what what a gathering! <laughs> what a gathering! And we celebrate that that time, special time for you. But let us settle ourselves and know just as much as we are assured of the sun rising each day and guiding us with light, that God is with us each day, seeking to lead us, to fill us with holy love and strength. To that God, let us now pray. O gracious God of all creation, you have fashioned the heavens and the earth. 
You have dotted the night skies with light to guide our path. You have given us the refreshing falling of the rain to nourish the earth and bring forth its blessings of harvest. Your sun shines and warms our paths and fills our day with its light. So fill us this day, O Lord, with the light of your love. May that love be especially bright upon all the families in Kentucky and other parts of our country who lost property and unfortunately lost family, fathers, mothers, sisters, and brothers to the devastation of the tornadoes. We cannot begin to imagine their grief in these moments. But in our feeble attempts, gracious Lord, bring forth your spirit from us to them. To seek to bring the beginning shimmers of light in the midst of darkness, hope in the times of other despair. Be that calming word, that gentle hand upon a shoulder, the embrace of someone crying within another's arms. Be present in your love. May it light and shine for them as strongly and as tenderly as their spirits need. Be with us daily, O Lord. Guide us in these days of Advent. We each in some way can sense the growing excitement and anxiety of the season. Just when we think we have things under control and moving easily, schedules get rearranged and life becomes more hectic than we imagined or even wanted. So calm our spirits. Calm our spirits through prayer, through devotions, to prepare our hearts to be the manger to hold the Christ child. For he comes for each of us to bring us joy, to bring us love, to bring us peace, and to bring us hope. Have all of his gracious gifts live and radiate through our lives so that through our living, the world may be transformed into his loving kingdom. For all this we ask in his name as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
So let us in these moments give thought to ponder upon the wonder and the graciousness of a God who has blessed our lives with so many gifts. And let us always give with joy. Amen.
practicing that finale for a long time. Well, thank you, Sue and Deanna, very much. I've known that song for a long, long time, and it's nice to hear it again. Scripture 
New Testament reading for this morning comes from the book of Revelation, the third chapter, just the 20th verse. Listen, I am standing at the door and knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you and eat with you and be with you. These are the words of God for the children of God this day. Amen. Today begins the third week of Advent, so we light our rose candle, the candle of joy, as we continue our exploration of moving from Bahamba to glory to God. Today we ask ourselves the question, what waits beyond that door? Today's scripture lesson and the story from stave three, as it's called, of Dickens' A Christmas Carol, all help to lead us forward on the pathway from Bahamba to glory to God. They do so by each having us focus upon a door, a door that wants to open to us and expose to us, reveal to us an important reality that unfortunately is exceedingly hard for far too many people to embrace. And that reality is simply this, living fully in the present moment. Living fully in the present moment. Through Scrooge's encounter with the ghost and spirit of Christmas present, we are challenged to ask ourselves an important question. How much time do I really spend living in the present moment? moment. How much time do I really spend in the present? Think about how much time we can spend just mulling over the past. Joys, regrets. Consider how often our minds return to events that took place yesterday, a week ago, several weeks ago, months ago years ago, and they just keep running, running on almost a continuous loop, never letting us go. And then consider how much time and energy do our minds spend wandering, worrying about what the future holds. We worry, we can worry about tomorrow, we can worry about next week, next year, or the years ahead, and what will life be like. We often spend an exorbitant amount of time either wandering around in our past, in a past that we can't change, and worrying about a future that we have little control over instead of embracing the only moments we truly have to experience this gift of life, the present moment now. The Gospel of Thomas is a collection of sayings attributed to Jesus that didn't make it into our Bible. I want to share one of those passages with you this morning. Just two simple verses from the Gospel of Thomas. It's called Saying 91, if you go look it up. Once the disciples came to Jesus and said, Show us plainly, Lord, who you are, and we will put our faith in you. Jesus replied to them, You study the heavens and you study the earth, but you do not know who is it that stands before you? Nor do you appreciate the present moment. 
nor do you appreciate the present moment. Those I find to be very powerful words. How well do each of us appreciate the present moment? The present moment is the only time we have. The present moment is the only place where we can truly live. But unfortunately, the present moment is too often filled with worries about the future and regrets and disappointments of the past. And we miss it. Our New Testament reading this morning from Revelation has Jesus say, in essence, look, look, attention folks, here I am. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice, open the door. Let me in. I'll come and eat with you. It's the scripture that inspired that great painting by William Holman Hunt of Jesus knocking on the door. The painting is a visual representation of Christ's invitation to share this moment, open up our lives now to him. But it's our decision as to whether that occurs or not. Before this Christmas Eve, Scrooge's life is either locked in a painful past or controlled by dreams of a future lined by the riches he has seized from the poor. Through a Christmas carol, Dickens seeks to show us the transformation of a greedy, narcissistic, cruel, miser of a man, the epitome of all that can go wrong in one's life, into the wonder of a person whose heart, whose heart is now utterly open to joy, generosity, beauty, and goodness. Something new, something divine, something life-giving is being born in Ebenezer Scrooge, and it comes to him as he embraces living in the present moment. And if Scrooge can be redeemed, then so can all of us. Scrooge's problem at the beginning of A Christmas Carol is that the life he's living is marked by death. It's his long history of loss, death and grief, unresolved and hidden away, that drives him to anger, prejudice and greed, and makes him such a miserable man, a man the, who Dickens says, though, is alive, is not far at any second from death. He breathes, but he's not living. And he doesn't really care if anybody else lives either. The ghost of Christmas past carried Scrooge into those memories. And Scrooge was made to feel the grief he had buried. Stop, spirit, I can't take it anymore, he cries. Haunt me no longer. But unlike the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present doesn't haunt Scrooge or appear to Scrooge who's cocooned up for protection in his bed. No, awakened by the chiming of the clock in his bedroom, Scrooge sees a light shining underneath his closed bedroom door. It's a scene from the Christmas Carol that almost resonates with Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door. Hunt's painting visually affirms that opening our life's doorway is our means to know Jesus better. And that sentiment is reflected in Dickens' Christmas Carol when we hear the ghost of Christmas present 
call out to Ebenezer from behind the closed door, come in, man, and get to know me better. He's encouraging Scrooge to get to know him now, in this present moment. Nervous, anxious, Scrooge chooses to open that door. Meeting in a once vacant room in his apartment, the ghost of Christmas present. This ghost is not frightening at all, but compelling. A jolly giant, Dickens writes, glorious to see who bore a glowing torch, a genial face, sparkling eyes, an open hand, a cheery voice, an unrestrained demeanor, and a joyfulness that even the air could not contain. The room in which Scrooge meets the spirit is a room filled of abundance, great food and fruit. And what the ghost of Christmas present presents Scrooge is like the ghost himself. Every visit they make in their dreamlike journey reveals the abundance in the now, in the life surrounding Scrooge. Warmth, joy, and love that flows out of the bleakest of circumstances. It's there when they visit the home of Bob Cratchit, whom Scrooge pays so poorly, and yet despite the family's poverty, there is abundance, there is an abundance of generosity, love and kindness that seats around that table. There are visits to miners singing and rejoicing in the countryside, sailors at sea with their ship tossed yet singing of the Christmas and Christ child, and lastly a dinner at Scrooge's nephew's own home. They all show the same thing. People who have reasons to quarrel and complain, to be bitter and angry and despairing about life in the present moment, but choose not to do so. Choose to embrace the present moment as a gift, and they find abundance within their lives that others would call meagerness. And most of all, they find generosity, kindness, and a grand, great spirit of love. They live Christmas now in the present. The challenge for Scrooge is that he had to open the door to the present and consciously step in to the abundance that the presence afforded him. He had to decide to cease living in the past and embrace all of life in the now, in the moment, because not doing, in not doing so, he was missing his only chance to truly live. That was our challenge last Sunday night during our blue Christmas service here in the sanctuary. We named and we lit candles for the challenges that hinder us from living in the present moment and experiencing the gift and the joy that is Christmas. We did not wish for a new day to arrive, a better day to arrive. We embraced our pain. We brought light into the midst of the darkness and we listened, we listened. And through our listening, I believe we heard Jesus knock on the doors of our closed heart. We heard Christ beckon all of us to invite him in and get to know him better 
just where we are in the midst of life's grief and struggles. To know him not as a God who takes away every pain we experience, but to know him as a God who walks and experiences all of life's moments with us. A God well acquainted with our pain. A God who offers to carry our pains that weigh us down. I feel that gift so strongly every time in that service where it comes to the moment that I light the Christ candle. I feel a weight being lifted and a burden being lightened. Oh yes, there are many of us who have good reasons to feel overcome by regret, worry, complain, and to quarrel, and to be angry. We have ample reason to say stuck in the past wishing for a life that we knew that we don't have now, when life isn't moving the way we wish and pray that it would. But there is no life for us when we live like that. We cannot live there. We can only shallowly exist there. We can only live in the here and now. Jesus encourages us to name our pain, embrace our sorrow, and acknowledge that he is standing with us in the midst of the mess of our lives. The spirit of Christmas present is just beyond the door for each of us today. You can see the light shining underneath the door itself. 2008 started out as a very, very good year for Nashville singer and songwriter Reggie Ham. He had a hit single that was racing up the charts. His record company had signed him to a deal to record five more singles and an album. Now on top of all of that, his family's long process of adopting a child from China with special needs had been approved. Life was going oh so well for Reggie and his wife. They took off to China to complete the adoption and bring the little girl with special needs home. But unfortunately, once in China, they ran into problem after problem completing the process. They were gone over eight months. With no follow-up single to release from their artist, Reggie disappeared from the charts. With no new music coming from him, his recording company terminated his contract. Unable to compose while he was overseas, when Reggie returned home, no one wanted him to write a song for them. The artists that once employed his services had now moved on to other composers. When le within less than a year, he has gone from being the top of the top to a struggling to survive Nashville singer-songwriter. He was jobless. His wife had to return to work, and if that wasn't hard enough, he received a letter from his insurance company stating they would not cover and insure his daughter's medical expenses because they were pre-existing conditions. So Reggie became a stay-at-home dad, and his wife went back to work. He said he concentrated on the only life he had at that moment, caring for his little girl. One night, Reggie and his wife were watching the first episode of the new season of the television show, American Idol. You remember it, you know the basis of how it moves. 
There was always a moment in the show when they showed the video, they showed the auditions of people, of singers who were just plain awful. They were the comic relief auditions that they showed to the TV audience. Well, Reggie's wife didn't like to watch, be tortured by watching this, so she asked him that night to get up and go turn off the TV, and he agreed. He rose from his chair to do so, but stopped in his tracks. Yes. Horrible sounds were still coming from all the singers on the television screen. But sweet giggles were coming from his daughter, his 18-month-old daughter, who they had been told would never make a sound. She was giggling at the TV screen. Her giggles got louder every time a horrible singer came on was singing on the screen. They disappeared when a good singer was singing. But the horrible ones just brought her to life. Reggie sat down. The TV stayed home. And he and his wife watched the rest of that night and all of the bad auditions, no longer grimacing, but smiling, crying, holding each other because their little girl was speaking. Near the end of the show, an announcement was made about a songwriting competition sponsored by American Idol. The winning song would be chosen by the fans of the show and released as the debut single of whoever won the competition. Through the encouragement of his wife, who that night handed him a $10 bill to cover the entry fee, he entered American Idol songwriting competition. They wanted a song, they said in, in their announcement of the competition, that was loud and proud, one looking always toward a great and grand future. Reggie wrote his song, recorded the demo, and sent it off. He said he wanted to write that triumphant song, and one, with that, one that dreams about the future and all the grandeur it holds, but he couldn't write such a song, because that wasn't his life right now. And tried as he could, no inspiration came. He said all he could write about was what he had learned over the last few months as a tireless, workless songwriter. He said he had discovered such joy staying home and living every moment with his little daughter that she brought him such great joy that that's how he fashioned his song, a testimony to how he lived each day, each moment with his daughter and his wife. He told his wife he no longer needed to be a successful songwriter. What he was experiencing right now was a greater success story than he ever could have dreamed for himself. He submitted his composition. His song made it through the producer's cut. Thousands of songs had been entered. He made it to be one of the 20 that were posted online for viewers to vote on. His song won. It debuted nationally the night the singer David Cook won American Idol. Within three weeks it was number one on all the charts in the United States. Within five Weeks, it was number one on any chart that mattered throughout the year. His life was forever changed by a special need daughter who instilled in him the wonder of living with her and her disabilities in the present moment. The chorus of his song proclaims, 
I'll taste every moment and I'll live it out loud because I know this is the time. This is my time to be more than a name or a face in the crowd. I know this is the time. This is the time of my life. So friends, today, December 20th, this is the time. The candle of joy is burning and filling this room with light right now. A light is creeping into our lives under the threshold of the doors that appear so closed and locked to us. Walk toward it. And as you arise in the darkness, walking toward that light, you'll hear a gentle knock and a soothing voice that says on the other side, Come in, child. Get to know me better. Turn the knob, gently push open the door, and behold God's gift of life today that waits for you beyond the door. It waits for you every day of this Advent season and beyond. Thanks be to God. Sing your own song of Gloria for the God who gives us life to live today. Amen. 